Hi, Jonathan Pickup. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I've just received an email from someone who wants to create this roof, this curving roof, this curving roof here. And they want to create it with a fall. It's got to be a metal roof. It's got to have a curved edge. Um, and the height of the roof varies at the wall, which is understandable because of the angle. They want to know how to make this in 3D. So I run a user group. We should have covered this this morning, but we didn't. So I just made this movie to answer this question. How are we going to create this? Well, my thoughts at the moment is that we should create a swept object. We can create a sweep object. Model on the menu bar, and we can create an object called a sweep. Here it is here. In order to create the sweep, what I need to do is to create the shape, the cross section through this. Now it's got a 2% fall. I've already created a wall, I think, for this object. So let's just go up here. Here's my wall here. We need to start drawing this object. I'm going to start probably somewhere back here, something in line with that. That's the furthest most object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 2% fall. So let's start here. We're going to come down at 2%. Now I don't know what angle that is, so I'm going to have to do some calculation for that. And I'm going to have to go uh, come across, uh, we'll come across 4 meters that way. Let me just do that again. So let's go in that direction, four meters. And 2% of that must be eight, oh, 80 millimeters. So it's got to be a minus 80. I think it'll give me a 2% fall. There we are. So that creates a, a sort of a shape for me. Now I want this to follow this curve through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back to my curve, back to there. In fact, what I should really do is make it down below here and drag that one across and line up with that edge. Now I just touch that point, line up, there it is there, make sure it's aligned H, oh, now I've lost it. So I'll zoom in and do it, maybe that's easier. So let's grab the end of that, touch that point there, and we want a line and a line H. It's very difficult to find it because it's quite close. So we need a curved end on that, so I'm going to draw my this object here, I'm going to make it curve down. I'm going to make it come down about 8 to 12 inches. So the length of that 300 millimeters. Enter, enter. So I've got these two objects. I'm going to right click on those. I'm going to choose Compose. Now if you can't find Compose on your right mouse click, then go up to Modify and choose Compose there. Now I'm using a customized workspace, which means I've got things that I like to use quickly. I'm going to offset that 50 millimeters or 2 inches. And I'm going to draw lines from there to there and from here to here. Now with all of that stuff selected, these things selected, and one of the other tricks I really like is you select one object and then you go edit and select connected objects. And it should connect, select all the things that are connected together and then modify and compose. Now the client actually wants a rounded corner on this, so I'm going to go back to my reshape tool. I'm going to change this to 300 millimeters I think 250 millimeters which is 10 inches for the inside there and 12 inches for the outside 300 millimeters and it gives me my curve so I'm going to take this shape I'm going to curve this shape to follow that radius if I get my 2d locus tool click here and select this object. Now these are both on the layer plane at the moment. I want them both to be on the screen plane. Now I've put them both on the screen plane. And the reason I put them on the screen plane is so that I can change from a plan view to a front view and they shouldn't move too much. So let's go orthogonal view. There they are there. There's my locus. There's my object for sweeping. Now we'll go to model in the menu bar and we'll go sweep. I think I need to start about 20, about sorry, about 90 degrees and 20 degrees for my arc angle. So in plan view, you can see it's not quite right. I haven't quite started where I should have done. I think I can drag that up to that point there, and it's pretty close to what I was after, that shape. Now I haven't done all of it because what I also need to do is I need to cut out the portion where it hits the building. If we have a look, you can see it's banging into the building, and I need to cut that portion away. There's two ways to think about this. One is to cut it out and use subtract solid. And the other way, which a lot of people don't think of, is to use intersect solid. So I'm going to create an extrusion from there to there. Select those two. Right click. Add surface. And I'm going to extrude that shape. So model, extrude. 
I'll extrude it about 10 feet, 3 meters, and the two should overlap each other. Now if I select both objects, I should be able to find where they intersect. So let's go. And what I'll do is I better leave those. I'm going to, I'm going to undo it and come back to this. So let's go model and we'll go intersect solids. And I'm left with this building here or this part of the wall. And you can see there it is there and it follows. And I think if we go to a side view, six, and we go to an orthogonal view. Now it's quite a shallow slope, but you can definitely see that the building gets, the roof actually goes up and follows that shape. So let's undo that. We'll go back to where we were. Uh, that's my extrude there. So let's get rid of that. So the other way of doing it is to do a subtract solid. So I'm going to do this shape and this shape, making sure those two overlap, add them together again, extrude again. Yes, same shape. And then I'm going to subtract solids. So right click, subtract solids. That's my base object. Let's leave that behind and OK. And so again, again, I get the same result. If I double click on this, I can see the original shapes I used to create it. Double click again, and there's my polygon there. That's my polyline that I used to create it. I'm going to look at this from a front view. I think a front view is what I want. There it is there. So let's double click on this polygon, and I'm going to go to, let's say for example, I've got my angle wrong. So I'm going to give it a bit more height. So I'm just going to go move. Let's move it up by about four inches, 100 millimeters. It's a little bit steeper. We'll do that again. Uh, let's do a dramatic move. Let's make it uh, 600 millimeters, 24 inches. So now it's got quite a dramatic change in that shape. I've exited my solid sub my sweep, exit my solid subtraction, and there's my object. It's recreated. And if I go to a front view, and let's look at this orthogonal. I think now we can see definitely there's a different shape. There it is there, there's my angle. So this is low, that's high. And that gives you the shape that my client was looking for. So that was using the sweep object. And there it is there. So it's kind of a cool trick. We've swept that round. We've got it lining up with our plan view. We've constructed a little plan view of that. So there's a couple of different ways I showed you how to make it. Thanks for getting to this part of the movie. If you haven't done it already, how about you hit the subscribe button for me and hit on the bell so that you get notifications when I've updated a new movie.